Sacred Space the podcast has been recorded on Gubby Gubby Country. Myself and guests acknowledge and pay respect to the elders past, present and emerging. Always was, always will be Aboriginal land. Welcome to Sacred Space, the podcast. I am Tanika, your host, and this is a space for you to tune in and become educated, evolved, and expanded on all things generational healing, personal development, and spirituality. This is a space where I'll get beautiful, like-minded guests on to speak into their stories and their wisdom, as well as hearing mine. So take a big, deep breath into your belly, get anchored, get grounded, and let's get into this week's episode. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to the podcast. Oh my goodness, today we had Spotify wrapped come live. Like I could see it for my end. So like how many people listen and all the things like that. Can I just say like I see stats throughout the year, but oh my God, (gasps) I almost want to cry because the amount of courage that it took to start this podcast. And I share this because if you feel like you can't do a fucking hard thing, like that's bullshit, you can. Like you can push past those stories because I started this podcast literally sitting on the floor of my spare bedroom with a $60 microphone, not knowing what the fuck I was doing, watching YouTube tutorial after YouTube tutorial and then to see like on the Spotify wrapped that 83 people I'm in your top five like that's a huge to me and I'm just so proud of myself I'm so excited that I've been able to create impact for like just so many people like there's been thousands of listens and that just feels fucking weird to say <laughs> I'm like what the hell I was not even gonna do this thing like I put it off for so long it's been a year and I'm just so grateful and I just wanted to share that gratitude with you before we got into the episode. But today we're going to be talking about 23 things that I have learnt in 2023. So I did this last year at the end of 2022 when I first began my podcast, the 22 things that I have learnt of last year. (laughs) I actually want to go give it a listen and like listen to old me and just be like, oh, you're so cute because God knows what I listened. I mean, God knows what I learnt yeah in 2022 because I feel like 2023 has just been fucking wild and I can just see that 2024 is going to be even freaking bigger so I want you as you listen to this episode of like the lessons that I've learnt from this year to recognize where maybe you've learnt similar lessons or to just take the wisdom that I've been able to dissect from each thing I'm hoping that I say the numbers right this time. I do remember, I'm pretty sure last episode, like when I did this last year, I was like fucking up the counting. So like, just give me grace if I mess it up and repeat numbers. At the moment, I'm actually running a countdown to Christmas in the Facebook community group, which you're invited to. You can um, jump on over with the link below. But I did on like one of the days, repeated myself and I'm just like, maths is just not my thing. So give me grace there. But let's begin with the quote of the week. We have become more aware of what is really worth your energy. This lands so deeply and I feel like it also really intertwines really well with like the lessons that I've learned because simply it just does. Like I've become so aware this year of like where maybe I've been putting my energy or places that I was, places, spaces, situations, whatever, that actually just didn't like... (laughs) fucking serve me like of course they didn't serve me um so yeah have a little think about that one but let's get into this I also just want to quickly remind you I do have my inner seasons masterclass which is a pre-recorded one hour masterclass all about the inner seasons and your menstrual cycle so this is going to be a really cool way for you to deepen your understanding about your cycle connect to your cycle if this is the start of your journey trying to understand your cycle fucking perfect for you if you already know your cycle um, but you're just wanting to go a little deeper with it this is also fucking perfect for you I explain it in a very digestible and easy way like I said it's in a pre-recorded format so you don't have to worry about like jumping on live or anything you can um, digest it at whatever stage you know on your morning walk doing your dishes in the morning or like whatever it is you can you can watch it then and also you're going to have access to it forever so that is only $22. I'll leave the link for that below as well. Um, yeah, I would definitely recommend it no matter where you are in your journey because 
when you understand your inner seasons, you deepen your relationship to yourself so fucking much. Like I actually put like just where I am right now today down to like knowing my menstrual cycle, which is really cool. Anyway, let's get into the episode. So number one, gratitude is actually the answer. Gratitude is actually the answer. And this came about, this was a really big theme for me this year is gratitude. And I, (laughs) I remember at the start of the year, I said to my beautiful partner, I was like really struggling with being someone who complains. Like I was just complaining about shit. It was like just so ingrained into me, complaining, complaining, and just, you know, things just felt like I was just bitch about them all the time. Like I was just like, oh, why is this meal too hot? Or what? Like, I don't know. I'll literally just find something to complain about constantly, which is really fucking normalized. And it shouldn't be because it's actually messed up. (laughs) Anyway, I said to my partner, I just, because he just is not a complainer. Like he just goes with the flow. I don't think he's complained about anything in his life. And I'm just like, what are you? Some enchanted fucking fairy. Like what is wrong with you? But actually I should have been asking what is right with you because now that I've really taken on his advice, I'll tell you what, like life has elevated. I said to him, but how do I not complain? I just don't know how I like don't complain. And he said, you just be grateful. And fucking hell, when I tell you that literally hit me, I was like, oh my God, I've been so ungrateful been complaining like instead of having gratitude that like I don't know let's just like take the example of like I overheated my food like instead of just being like oh fuck I overheated my food it's like oh my gosh like I overheated my food and now I have like an extra five minutes to tidy up the kitchen before I eat because my food has to cool down like I'm so grateful like the perspective shift there just oh my god it just changed everything for me so that was probably one of the biggest lessons I've learned this year I would say Um, number two is the only limit we have is what we put on ourselves. And this can be a hard pill to swallow if you're on your journey to taking like self-responsibility and accountability for like what's actually going on in your external world. But it was really cool. I was having a conversation with my mum and law about it actually. And we're just talking about how like some people can go skydiving like every single day and you know, they love it. They just fucking love it. They're addicted to it. Like they do it as a job, whatever. And then other people will crawl into a ball, be anxious as fuck and like won't actually do the thing. They won't take that leap of faith. And we were both kind of just saying like, it literally comes back to like the limit that they're putting on themselves. Like person A believes that like, if they jump out of that plane, they're going to have like the best time of their life and see like things from a higher perspective. And then person B is like, if I jump out of that plane, I could die. If I jump out of that plane, something bad might happen. And like when you live in those narratives of like maybes and mights and coulds and whatever, like you are limiting yourself so much. And that's where we are our biggest limit, honestly. So there's one. So number three is it's okay not to be liked by everyone. And this one got my little people pleasing heart at the start of this year. Bloody aching. I tell you, like I feel like I thought that I had worked on that of like, it's okay not to be liked by everyone. But then the more that you up level, the more that you elevate, you kind of meet with the same thing, but it gets a bit more intense or it it comes to the forefront a little bit more, should I say. And something I've really learned this year through a lot of closed doors, a lot of chapters ending is that it's actually okay. Like you don't die if someone doesn't like you, like you actually are fine. And When you, you know, other people don't like you and they project things onto you, it's actually an area for you to like grow in self-trust and for you to actually like grow in just being more convicted in like the human you are. So I think that's a really cool lesson that I learned this year um, is it's okay not to be liked by everyone. And if you trigger people like cool, that means that they can either see that trigger, work on that part of themselves that you trigger within them, or they can choose to do whatever they fucking want with the information. But at the end of the day, like what you focus on is literally like what you get in return. So it's just, it's not even your problem. If someone doesn't like you, like who fucking cares, like move on. And I've really learned that this year, which is super cool. Um, number four is sometimes doors have to slam. So new ones can open. And that kind of, I guess is like very much led on from number three, but it's like this year, I think I've lost more people And more doors have slammed than any other year in my entire life. Like this year would have to be 
I feel like one of the best years of my life, but equally one of the hardest because I've had to stay in my own, like I've had to really lean on just like self-love and and trusting in myself and trusting in the process rather than falling victim to people who are walking out of my life or falling victim to people who just aren't serving me anymore. And it's just been really cool to witness that within myself. And, and honestly, every single door that has slammed close, closed, something in like extraordinary has presented itself to me, whether it is another relationship or a situation or whatever it could be. Like, I promise you, if you allow those doors to slam closed and you're open to change, your whole life will actually like up level. And I'm still learning this, of course, like the doors slamming thing. Like, I don't think even this is something that anyone can be like 100% okay with because of course, like we're humans, we have emotions, but I just want to bring that awareness that like, yeah, when they fucking slam, like you wait till that other door opens. It's going to be like a floodgate of abundance flowing into your life. Number five is investing in myself. So in like courses, et cetera, is actually the best investment I can make. So when I say investing in myself, I'm talking even like my monthly haircut, my monthly, whatever I choose, like massage, kinesiology, whatever it is, like when you invest in yourself and including courses, like I said, like nothing else can actually like justify, like nothing else can sort of compare is the word I'm trying to find. Because when you better you and you can show up as a better human, like how do you even compare to that? Like when you are bettering you, when you're investing in yourself, when you are up leveling your knowledge, when you are just allowing yourself to be held by others, all of those things and be having things like reflected to you or learning new parts of self, any of this, like you actually can't compare to that because it it stops that stagnation feeling and it just allows you to show up as a better friend, to show up as a better partner, to show up as a better whatever you're showing up as. (laughs) It literally is like you can't, it's unmatched. It's literally unmatched. And the amount of wisdom that I've acquired this year has been so, I mean, I feel like every year I'm learning, but like this year, I feel like I've just learned so much more about me because more than investing in just courses and like courses as in like trainings for my business, as in like Bowen therapy and breath work and all the things like that, instead of just investing in those like things this year, really focusing in on like bettering me and, and, and investing in things for me as the human. Oh my gosh. I feel like I've just like really found myself. I, I, that's, that's how I would put it. I've really found myself. I've really anchored in to Tanika, which is super cool. Um, number six is <laughs> this one's random and probably controversial, but you don't actually have to wash your hair. So I stopped washing my hair a couple of months ago. Well, I've always used, um, shampoo bars and which have like nothing in them. They're literally like essential oils and whatever. But then one of my friends, she stopped washing her hair like ages ago and she has the most beautiful hair. Like it is like when I touched it, I literally said to her, that can't be real. It actually felt like pure silk. And it really inspired me to not wash my hair because you don't have to. And anyway, I stopped washing my hair. I just use apple cider vinegar, of course, in it when it like starts getting oily. Don't think I'm like completely disgusting, but our like natural oils in our hair can actually like keep our hair moisturized and everything. And I swear, since I've stopped washing my hair, my hairdresser has been like, holy shit, lady, your hair's growing so fast. Like I feel like my hair is the healthiest it's ever been. So there's a little random one, but also to like go off the back of this is when you like stop using I mean, for me, it wasn't dramatic, like, when I stopped washing my hair, because, I, like I said, I was using really natural stuff. I feel like if you were using, like, normal shampoo and conditioner and then just, like, stopped washing your hair, like, maybe go about it a little differently because it might be a bit hectic. Um, but, like, the cool thing about this is it's so supportive on your menstrual cycle as well because when you're using, like, fragrances and stuff in your hair and all those chemicals, like, that is still getting absorbed by your skin and that's affecting your hormones and that's equally affecting your menstrual cycle so it's just something to think about like even if you don't stop washing your hair like you could just like go to get a shampoo bar that doesn't have fragrances and chemicals so that's a random one number seven is coffee is not essential and oh my god saying this I'm like goodbye past identity (laughs) I stopped drinking coffee this year and I've stopped drinking coffee before 
But then, like, coffee's, like, such a huge part of my personality, and I just stopped. I actually stopped when I started studying because I was recognizing that I was just wired as fuck when I was drinking it. Um, I was way more anxious drinking it than I realized. Like, I stopped drinking it, and I was like, oh, like, what? <laughs> um, it's been so supportive of my cycle. It's been so supportive for my skin. I've actually had so many people, like, compliment me on my skin since I've quit coffee. Like, literally just saying I look so healthy, I'm glowing, like those kind of compliments that like everyone wants since quitting coffee. And I put it down to that because I truly was just like stripping my system of like hydration to the core. So yeah, that's like a really cool thing that I've learned this year is I actually don't need caffeine or coffee. And it's funny because usually people start studying and then they're like, oh my God, I need so much coffee. And then I was like, oh my God, I need no coffee. (laughs) So yeah. Number eight is, I feel like I have learned this in previous years, but then this year, I feel like I've learned like even more is self-love practices are actually a non-negotiable. And I put this down as well to like, since starting studying full time, since running, well, I mean, I've been running my business already, like running my business, my relationships, like all these things that I'm like juggling that I feel like I'm doing so easily. Like I literally was saying last week to Jai, I said, I feel like people say that like studying full time is really hard on its own. I'm doing that. I'm running a business. And then we are still on weekends, like doing things together. And we're still like going away. And like, I don't feel like it's hard. And I'm like, is there something wrong with me? Am I missing something? Like, how am I getting high distinctions in like literally everything I'm submitting? But I still feel like I'm like not even fucking doing like anything. I can't explain it. And I put it down to like actually loving myself. Like I take time every single day to show myself love, whether it's by dancing, whether it's by using my yoni egg, whether it's by journaling, by having a bath, like fucking name your thing. But like, I put it down to that. I take time for myself and it makes sense, right? It's kind of like off the back of like investing in myself. Like if you don't fucking put effort into you, why would anything else put effort into you? Is that right? (laughs) But like, you know, we are an energetic match for what we're an energetic match for. So if I'm complaining and saying like, fucking study so hard, I can't do this. Business is so hard. Like whatever. I'm focusing on all that shit. Like why would it feel good? Whereas when I'm taking time to actually just be with Tanika, when I'm just taking time for me, like some days that is only five minutes. Like I'm going to be fucking real. Like it can't be like a half an hour practice every single day. Yes, at lunchtime every single day, I try to take an hour in the middle of the day just for me. But also if I have a fucking like biochemistry assignment due and an exam for biology next week, like there's probably a slim chance that I have an an hour free to do that. But I'll still take time to do like a midday meditation or yoga, like whatever it is, like fucking love yourself. I know I preach it all the time, but just can you please do it? Please do it. Moving into the next year, starting right now, love yourself. Learn that lesson with me. Number nine, I feel like I've been talking so much. Oh my God, which makes sense. It's a podcast, but you know, (laughs) number nine, I am a consistent person. Oh my God. This was a lesson that I was blindsided by. I used to think, and I think I've spoken about this previously. Like I literally used to believe that I was inconsistent. I was like, I'm not a consistent person. I can't stick to anything like fucking cry me a river, like be victim to that Tanika. Like I always say provide the evidence for yourself along the way. Like I literally, like my podcast, like every single week I had a short break in the middle of the year. Other than that, I've literally been in your ears every single week. That to itself is like consistency, right? I've like committed to that. I'm doing it. There's been other areas of my life where I've been consistent as well, where I like say something and then I stick to my word where I will not want to like do something. For example, like even quitting coffee, like it would be so easy for me to be like, yeah, I'm quitting coffee and then just like not quit coffee, like actually reintroduce it like a week later because like I can't fucking live without it. Like, no, I consistently stayed with my word and I've done that with so many things in my business, with study, with my self-love rituals, like name it, name it. I've fucking stayed consistent if I've put my energy towards that. So that's super cool for me to see and it's a really cool lesson. And yeah, I want you to like think about like that, like what stories are you fucking telling yourself? Like I'm just not someone who can do that or I'm just not someone that does that or whatever it is like where are you actually just limiting yourself by saying I'm not because 
I believed I was not consistent. I actually believed when I started my podcast, this will last a month. Like, no, 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 (laughs) no, not on. Okay. Number 10, sometimes we don't need to know how we're getting somewhere. We just need to know where we want to go. And fucking this one, actually, I don't know. I said number one was probably my biggest lesson, but I kind of now I'm thinking this one is a huge one because our human brain always wants to know like how things are going to happen. And we're always like, oh, okay, cool. So like I want, for example, like I want to buy a Range Rover, (laughs) random example, (laughs) something I definitely want to do. I want to buy a Range Rover. Okay. I could sit there and I could map out my next five year plan financially and figure out how I'm going to pay for that Range Rover, you know, put it on my vision board, all the things be like, all right, I need this many clients this week. I need this many clients this week. I need to do this. I need to limit myself here. I need to X, Y, Z. And then I would have my full action plan. I would have the how of how to get there. And then three weeks into this how, this plan that I've got to buy the Range Rover, the universe throws me a fucking flu and I can't work that week. So then, you know, you know what I'm trying to say? When you try and plan something and have the how, it's not going to work that way. We literally cannot do that. Like you need to be okay with the surrender. You need to be okay with knowing that you're going to get somewhere. Like you are going to get there, but letting go of like how you're getting there and just allowing it to be like, okay, I know like I'm going to get there. I don't know what time frame I'm going to get there, but I'm going to let go of the how and I'm just going to be okay with the it's available to me. And every single day I'm taking the steps to get there, even if I don't realize I'm doing it. I feel like that's just such a big lesson. Like, don't get caught up in the how, because as soon as you get caught up in the how, which last year I did so fucking much of, like, how am I going to do this? How am I going to do that? Like, oh, 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 why isn't this working for me? Got to let go of that. I'm just take it from me. Let go of the how. Okay. 11. Moving from pleasure isn't as hard as you think. Oh my gosh. I used to be this fucking person. Again, hear the limiting stories that like we tell ourselves, right? But someone who used to believe that I could only work from pressure, like only work on a time frame. Bullshit. Bullshit. That is actually bullshit. And if you're someone who believes that, like I promise you there's more to that because Yes, working from pressure, like it can feel good. Like you can get addicted to that, that like competitiveness, right? Like that, yes, I'm getting things done. But you can equally like map out your days. You can equally understand what's coming for you in the next like couple of months. I guess I'm just looking at this from like a business lens, but like, you know, if you're, if you study, um, if you do run your own business, whatever it is, like you can look at it for, from a lens of like, okay, I know I'm in my cycle at this time. So, you know, for example, I'm bleeding next week. So that means next week I'm not going to be working as much. So this week I'm going to like make sure I get these tasks done. I've got this week to get them done. Like you don't have to do it from a space of like leaving it to the last minute and then freaking out and not doing something super well. And being in my business, I feel like my business journey has really like allowed me to see that, that like it's actually out of integrity. Well, I believe it's out of integrity to like leave things to the very last minute, but also you don't have to work from pressure. Like that's actually just a made up make believe story. That's a fairy tale. I mean, not a fairy tale. That's like a lie, lie, pants on fire kind of story. Like <laughs> you believe that because you've probably been told that your whole life that like, oh, you only work from pressure. So yeah, working from pleasure has been really cool. And I just love it because I feel like I have so much freedom. And that again, I guess leads into, I mean, yeah, like relates to the one where I said like, um, which one was it? I think it was like the self-love one, like how you, how I, sorry, um, I just lost my train of thought because I looked at my notes. Jesus Christ. (laughs) I feel like it really leads into the self-love piece around like, because I give myself love every day, I don't feel like I'm overworked or burnt out because I understand my cycle and everything with like studying and all the things. And then this equally like is the same thing of like work from pleasure because I'm like, I can't get my words to articulate properly, but I'm sure you understand what I'm trying to say here is like, if you take time for you, 
you can come from a space of pleasure. You don't have to come from a space of like pressure and feeling like it's all too much. Okay. Moving on from me, not understanding my own words. (laughs) Number 12, taking a risk has a huge reward if you lean in. And I feel like this year, yeah, it does. Like I started studying my Bachelor of Health Science in September and like that was a huge lean in moment for me. And already I'm seeing the the reward, sorry, in myself of like, oh my gosh, you actually can do the thing to Nika. Like I've been able to prove to myself, like it's actually perfect. And another like huge risk I've taken this year is I invested in my first mentor for like one-on-one to start in January. Um, And although this like wasn't a freaking huge risk where it's like, I'm going to freaking lose my assets or anything like that. Like it wasn't like that at all, but it was more like the risk of like, Oh, I'm going to be seen in like who I truly am. Oh, I'm going to like actually like quantum leap. Oh, like those sort of risks. And already, like, even though I haven't started with her yet, obviously, because like we don't start for a couple months, I'm like the reward I'm already seeing in myself of just like that I can commit to myself, like that my external environment, like the, those doors are slamming. They're continuing to slam all around me to create space for like what's actually meant for me. So like taking risks, I feel like is just, it's so powerful because it's just building your level of self-trust. And I think that's really, really cool. Number 13, I love matcha. (laughs) So Baskin Robbins, which is like an ice cream place, if you don't know, I'm sure everyone has to know that because they're the best. They have this matcha ice cream, but the catch is only like the only Baskin Robbins where I ever find this matcha flavored ice cream is Harbour Town on the Gold Coast, and they used to have it at Surface Paradise. I'm not sure if they still do. If you're on the Gold Coast, like you need to go try this ice cream. It's actually so fucking good. And like, why is no one talking about it? Anyway, I used to adore that when I was like younger and like whenever I can get it, I'm like, hello. But I hadn't really tried like a matcha drink. I think the first one I got was like from a Starbucks in Brisbane a few years ago. And I was like, oh, that's so good. But then I drank coffee, so I just didn't bother with it. This year, I have fallen in love with matcha. Like, marry me, matcha. I love you. It is so good. And what I love about it is it's full of antioxidants, which is super supportive on your health. But also, it's a slow-release caffeine, so it doesn't hit you like um, coffee. And, like, I feel like I can just have my matcha of, like, the mid-morning or, like, whenever I feel like it. I don't at all get, like, caffeine headaches. I'm just, like, if I feel like it, like, I don't have to have it every single day. Um, But it's just, like, oh, my God, it tastes so good. So, like... I make mine with lion's mane and coconut sugar and it's freaking good. So like definitely try it. And I get my matcha from the source bulk foods, which is where I get like so many things because I love them. 14, your 20s are a whole lot of changing, evolving, stripping away and new beginnings. And like I know people say your 20s, you know, you meet people, you lose people, like fucking you learn all the lessons, whatever. Like it's fucking true, my friends. And I just wanted to bring this lesson in here because you're not alone if you feel like you're still finding yourself you're not alone if you feel like you had like this beautiful circle of friends in school and now you're like who the fuck am I I'm like this lone wolf or like you're not alone if me speaking for myself (laughs) you're not alone if you're like you know learning all these new things about yourself you're having these breakthroughs you're stripping away old identities you think you love something and then a few months later you're like I fucking hate that thing I don't want that in my life anymore like I just wanted to bring that in because it's so fucking true. Like we just learn so much and just be grateful for that. Like be grateful that we have those lessons available to us. As hard as the lesson gets is like the stronger that you're going to get. So just remember that as well. Like the harder the lesson, the stronger you are because you can get through it. Number 16, being vulnerable is so powerful. I still feel like I'm learning this, but vulnerability I guess like with vulnerability comes like those feelings if you're not integrated in it like the feelings of unsafety the feelings of like oh shit like I'm being seen for like how I'm actually feeling not how I should be feeling and running my monthly full moon circles here on the sunshine coast with beautiful women like it's always a different circle every single month but some of the things that I've been able to speak allowed and just be seen in and not from a space of like poor me I'm a victim to this more from a space of like 
cool. I hold these safe, sacred circles with like-minded women where we get to voice what's going on for us and be seen in that, but not stay stuck in that. It's more about bringing it to the surface so that you can be witnessed. And then like, we all let it go. Like, it's not about bringing it up and fucking staying stuck in it. And I think that's really cool about my circles, but I have opened up to some of those girls about just some crazy shit that I've had to work through this year because this year has been by far, like I said, like one of the hardest years of my life. Like I have not had to face grief before. And then this year has just been like, it's been like grief, gratitude and good times. (laughs) Like it's just been like this crazy year and I've opened up and been vulnerable and being seen in that actually shifted so much. Like, I feel like I was able to like be vulnerable, be seen and being like, Oh my gosh, like I'm not alone. And then boom, it's transcended. And I think that's really cool. It's like getting to a space where you process it enough on your own to then being vulnerable with other people. And then like, it's actually just done. Like you don't have to keep on playing into it anymore. Number 17, intention is everything, which yes, it is. (laughs) When we do things from a space of just because or like we don't have intention behind it, the energy is so different. And I feel like what's so cool is like when you put intention behind everything, you're like romanticizing your life. Like you're actually making everything like a ritual. And I love that so much. And I also notice when you put a bad intention behind something and maybe like for those of you playing at home, you could actually like test this out go into like two of the same situation or like whatever it is and like set a good intention then set a bad intention and you're going to see or not so much like a bad intention but like a you know for example you're going to climb a mountain at the bottom you're like I set the intention that I can fucking smash this out I'm going to feel so proud of myself and then day two you climb a mountain I set the intention this is going to feel really hard guarantee you it's going to feel really fucking hard like intention is like a driving force it's the direction for the universe to support us in where we're moving Number 18, patience. Holy shit, patience, bro. Like, I swear, every day of my life, I am, like, taught the lesson of patience to the point where, like, I think it's because I can naturally be, like, very go, go, go that I've just been taught, like, slow down a little bit more, Tanika. Like, just stop and smell the roses. Like, to the point where, like, even in Pillow Talk the other day, I was buying, like, these – I'm redoing my studio at the moment – I was buying these throws for my studio. I swear to God, like, why could they not find what I wanted? And I was fine. I was like, cool, let's chill. Like, take your time. And then they finally found the ones I wanted. I got one of the display ones and then, like, another one off the shelf. Finally, it was, like, literally a half an hour process. I was super chill with it. We get to the counter. And then the boss lady is like, if you're going to sell her, <laughs> if you're going to sell her the display one, you need to check the stock levels and go out the back and literally like four of these team members are searching for like anyway long story short I waited I think I was in pillow talk like a five minute like time spent in there turned into like 50 minutes (laughs) and it was well and good like everyone was so nice and they were so apologetic and I was just like honestly I know this is happening because I'm actually getting taught patience right now and the funniest thing about it is like I saw that Pillow Talk had the exact thing I wanted. And instead of just ordering it online and like getting it delivered in a few days, I rushed straight to Pillow Talk to get it. So it was kind of like I wasn't having patience in that I saw it and could have just ordered it at home. I I rushed there and then I was still taught the lesson of patience. So I feel like it's something I'm learning over and over. But when you have patience, like I also feel like it's kind of similar to gratitude. It's like you actually have space to like be grateful for like the time in between and I don't know. It's just something like everyone's rushing. Everyone just is always looking for like the next thing. And when you actually harness patience, it, it just changes things. So I invite you to be a patient bitch. If you're not number 19 lion's mane mushroom. So I, I should more say like number 19, having lion's mane mushroom has like supported me so much with my focus. (laughs) I started taking lion's mane when I started studying because I don't really want to identify with like having ADHD, but like I tell you fucking what, like I, (laughs) 
sitting down and focusing, like it takes a lot for me. Like I get it done. I have to get it done. Like it's cool. But like, I also want to support myself as best I can and not play into the narrative of like, oh, I have ADHD, so I can't do it. Like I actually just, I do things my way. Like I found my way of doing things. It might not just be like sitting at a desk all day. Like some days I actually am in the energy to do that. But like a lot of the time I actually can't, like I have to change my workspace every single day. I might be working in my bedroom one day. I might be working in the spare room one day in my office, then in my studio and then outside. Like I have to change up my environment. And, but one of the things that's really supported me to get shit done and to like really focus and get into that flow state, like super easily, I would say is definitely lion's mane. Like it's really, really supported me. Um, if you don't know, it's a medicinal mushroom. Apparently in Australia, all of a sudden, like as soon as I decided I wanted to start taking it, apparently it's not like a food grade mushroom and you're not supposed to take it. But then I also bought it from an organic shop. Like one organic shop told me it's illegal and then another one sold it to me. So I'm unsure in what, if I'm taking illegal drugs every single day, (laughs) not that it's drugs, but like, you know what I'm saying? It's just like, (laughs) I don't know. I don't fucking know, but it's really supported me and it's supposed to help with like brain and mood and, um, something else focus. Yeah. Like I just said, and I actually, now I'm saying it, I feel like my moods have actually been super great as well. Like I just have felt even more regulated, which is super, super cool. And that's just a lesson I've learned is that it's okay to take like natural supplements. Like if you want, like, I feel like I had this morphed belief that like, if you take supplements, like you don't have, there's something wrong with you. But I just think when you're taking it from an empowered space, like, why is there anything wrong with you? Like, see you later to that belief. Number 22 is, oh my gosh, I mean, number 20. (laughs) I knew I was going to get it at some stage. Okay, number 20 (laughs) is you don't have to do what everyone expects of you to do. And I feel like this lesson is like something that I would relate more to my relationship with my partner. So next year we've been together for 10 years at the end of next year. And that's a long time, right? Like it's a long fucking time, but over the journey of us being together, a lot of people have always projected onto us. Like when you're getting engaged, blah, blah, blah. And I feel like for a while I like really played into that. Like I was like, Oh, it's coming. Or I would like shame giant. Like, Oh, he's just not asking me. But this year I've really learned that like you don't actually have to do just because that's like the expectations of society that like we should be fucking engaged right now or like we should be having kids like that's another one we cop is like when are you having babies like you don't have to fucking listen like that's their own shit like that's their own limitations like and I just guess yeah like the expectations of people it just doesn't fucking matter because you don't have to take it on you don't have to listen to them and this year I've really learned to just be like we're happy where we are and like if it happens cool we'll both be so fucking grateful but also equally right now we're both so focused on building our careers and like building our lives to be in a space so that when we do have kids eventually we are like we can be better parents than like like we can be really good parents like that's what we're wanting to like get to like you know we can go on overseas holidays with our kids we can do these things like I don't know I feel like everyone has their own journey but for us just receiving those projections and Jai's being able to hold them so fucking well our whole relationship whereas I've been like the one that's like given into them and just be like oh like I said like shamed Jai and stuff but like this year I've really just learned like fucking hell like it's gonna happen when it happens and like just because everyone around us expects these things and like projects those things it's like I don't have to do what everyone's expecting of us like we are already like so fucking different like we are so weird like I can't explain it like we just do things differently like It actually just makes sense that we're not engaged yet. And also, I'm literally 24. Like, give me a break, people. Anyway, number 21. EFT tapping is amazing. If you haven't tried EFT tapping, I literally just do ones on, like, Insight Timer, like, nearly every day. And it has supported me so much in moving through, like, self-love, in moving through, um like, money blocks, in moving through just, like, so many different things. Like, you name it, surrender. Um, what's another one that's like really supported me with, um, oh, letting go of shame, like EFT tapping is just so fucking potent. So I, if you go on insight timer and just put in EFT, like it'll probably just come up with so many things. And like, I just, I just think EFT tapping is just like fucking amazing. Like why is no one talking about it? It's like works with the meridians, which is like based on traditional Chinese medicine. So it's really, really cool. Number 22 is... 
okay, this one could be like controversial, but like, oh, I swear for like my whole, like for a good, like three years or something, two years, maybe I had this like morphed perception of like, if I like this or that, like that was my perception of like this or that. And I feel like a lesson that I've learned this year is very much instead of being in that this or that, it's like, I get to have it all. Like instead of sacrificing, yeah, that's what it is. It's like moving from sacrificial energy to like abundant energy, like changing your mindset from like scarce to abundant. And what I want to like loop this into is like the lesson I've learned this year is like, I was like very much in the belief of like, if I'm this healthy, like, mentor for women supporting women with their menstrual cycle supporting women on their wellness journey I can't go out and have a cocktail I can't be seen in that because if I'm seen in that I'm going against my values and blah 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 blah. and I shamed myself so fucking much for like just having fun for like going out and doing those things that like literally I swear every young person or anyone in their whole life does anyway but I just put myself in this box of like I can't do that because but really the lesson that I learned in that is like I actually can it's just about healing my relationship to duality and that I actually can have both it doesn't have to be this or that that's a huge lesson I've learned this year is it does not have to be this or that it can be all of it and it's actually fucking perfect because the moment that you shut down one aspect of yourself you're going to be over expressing it in an unhealthy way in another area of your life and I've really seen that in myself this year so coming into that of like no I am going to be a girl who like maybe once a month I'll go out for a cocktail with Jai and then the next day maybe we're going on a fucking 12k hike cool I'm human like you know what I mean (laughs) so yeah healing my relationship to duality has been cool and number 23 is this lesson oh it's like I am just every single year every single day blown away by the power of women I am fucking mind blown by how powerful women are and this year I have learnt that each and every woman who has come into my world whether they've stuck around or whether they've you know done one thing and then walked their own path another way every single woman is so fucking powerful but what I've learnt is a lot of women don't see that in themselves and as a mentor whatever you want to fucking call me like one thing I've learnt is women need to start seeing that in themselves because I fucking see that in every single woman and it's so cool like I don't think people realize how much power they hold in themselves and oh it just almost gets me emotional like number 23 women are powerhouses holy fuck we actually can do it all and we also get to have it all as well and I think that's a really cool like note to leave this podcast in on is like it's not this or that it's not like we can have this but we can't have that it's like we can actually have it all and that's like a huge lesson yeah just like which wraps into every single one so if you listen to this podcast like I equally feel this way about you like being able to like listen to what I have to say like putting up with my voice in your ears like (laughs) you're amazing (laughs) I'm going to wrap up this episode now. It's been a fucking long one. I know I'm, I'm sorry, but like you got to learn, come along for the ride with all the lessons that I've learned this year. Um, Don't forget to jump over into the Facebook community group. It's going to be lit over there, especially right now on our way to Christmas. We're doing the countdown, which is so cool. There's going to be like all free stuff getting posted every single day, like short videos and stuff. And a reminder that I do have my inner seasons masterclass coming up. Please jump in there. I would love to have you in my world. It's a really cool, like little taste into how I like educate and stuff. So it's just $22. You'll learn all about your menstrual cycle, all about your inner seasons and it's pre-recorded, so you can catch up on it whenever you want. I love you so much. Like, if you think you know how much I love you, I love you more than that. (laughs) Thank you so much for listening till the end and I will be back in your ears next week. Hi, beautiful. Thank you so much for being a part of my podcast community. I have so much gratitude for you and I would love to hear what you think about this podcast. Leave me a review on Spotify or Apple Podcasts or share this episode with a close friend that needs to hear it. If you leave me a review and send me the screenshot on Instagram at sacred space W Tanika Lace, I will forward you access to a free guided womb healing breathwork journey 
and a 15% off code to purchase any masterclasses or courses available on my website. All you have to do is leave me a review, send me the screenshot on Instagram at sacred space w Tanika Lace, and I'll forward you access to the free guided womb journey and a 15% off code. I love you so much and I'll see you next week.